incidents, and on this clip, we're going to be going over uh, some examples of finding uh, the upper bound, lower bound, supremum, and infimum of sets. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the instruction for the first example. Uh, for the first example, we have the following. So we are to find, uh, um, find, we call this example one, find the upper bound, find the upper bound, supremum, which is related to the upper bound, supremum, uh, or the lower bound, lower bound, um, and infimum, and infimum, or S. In this case, S is going to be a subset of the reals, okay? A subset of the reals. Um, after finding the supremum, infimum, upper and lower bound, uh, state, state, if the, supreme, the supremum, I just call it the soup of S, and the if and the in, the infimum, the inf of S, are in the set S. Okay, we know they're in the reals. In the, in the, they are, we know that they're contained in the reals, but the question is, are the infimum or supremum of this set that we're about to consider, are they, are they in S? So after you're done finding, answering all these questions, you then state if these two are, are true or false, okay? All right, so let's start out by finding um, the upper bound. All right, so we wanna find the upper bound first. Alright, so to find the upper bound, um, oh wait, let me write down the set. <laughs> the set that we're looking at is the set S uh, with X such that the collection of X's that satisfies this inequality, X square, is less than, um, let's say, less than uh, 11, okay, less than 11. Alright, so let's say this is a set of S, which is clearly a subset of the reals. So we're going to find the upper bound of this set, okay? So let's find the upper bound first. Alright, so to find the upper bound, uh, we need to find all the values that satisfy, all the values of X that satisfy this inequality right here, alright? So let's go ahead and find that. So I'm going to extract this piece of the equation, X squared, less than 11. I'm going to solve it. So to solve it, I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. So we're going to have the absolute value of x is less than root 11. And we know that our absolute value is something plus or minus x is less than or equal to root 11. And then we can, oh, it's no less than or equal to it's less than our root 11. And then to finish this up, we can just uh, write this as a sandwich inequality. And the, the answer is going to be negative root 11 is less than x, and um, x is less than root 11, all right? So if you take a look at this uh, result right here, this is clearly a bounded set. These are the set of x's that satisfy this equality. So we have this bounded set right here. The question is, um, what is the upper bound? So before we determine what the upper bound is, let's do a real quick review on what, what does it mean to be an upper bound, okay? We can say, this is just a definition, b is an upper bound, B is an upper bound, upper bound of, let's see, set S, if for all the X's, for all X's um, in S, there exists this B such that X is guaranteed to be less than or equal to B. This makes B an upper bound. Okay, note, B is one of the upper bounds. Okay, any number that's bigger than B also qualifies as the upper bound of this set. Okay, so if you look at the terminology upper bound, it's not unique, okay? Upper bound uh, is a collection of numbers that are bigger than the, the least upper bound, so to speak. So this is one of them. So this is the smallest of them. Then um, any number bigger than this would be considered an upper bound. Okay, so let me just 
give a visualization. So we have a number line like this, and um, we have this open set right here. This, this is bounded, but open. And let's say this is B right here. B is an upper bound of this set, right? Because every member, see this is a set S, as every member of this set is less than B. Okay, this is the value of B right here. But B is one of the upper bounds. Any number bigger than B going to the right, all these values right here, let me call it B1, B2, B3, every number to the right bigger than B, these are all upper bounds of S also because they're bigger than B, okay? So if you look at this result that we have here, what do you think the upper bound is? Well, let me sketch a graph of the result, and then we're going to determine what the upper bound is. So, um, the low point is we have uh, negative root 11, and we have root 11, okay? This is an open circle, I'm gonna, and then this, the collection of all the real numbers in here, which is like a line, basically define the set of numbers that satisfy the inequality, okay? So, oh boy. So the uh, upper bound is going to be, this is the, this is the number that every me member of this set is less than. So the upper bound, upper bound is, upper bound is, uh, I can write this x such that x is, uh, let me use y since um, we already have x taken, let's use y. So y such that, um, such that y is greater than or equal, greater than or equal to root 11, okay? So any number that's 11 or with 11 or bigger, that's, that qualifies as the upper bound, okay? So out of this upper bound, the whole collection of upper bounds, what is the supremum? What is the supremum? Well, the supremum is a list of all upper bounds, okay? It's also known as the list upper bound. So if you look here, this is an upper bound. Any number to the right, these are all upper bounds. What is the smallest of them? This is the smallest of them. The least upper bound is root 11. So the supremum is basically root 11, okay? Because it's the least upper bound. All right, let me put that there. Um, so, yeah, so it says B is an upper bound of S. If all X and S, there exists to be such that X is less than or equal to B. That's that's the upper bound. And at least, the least decided, the least of all numbers that satisfy this inequality right here is known as the least upper bound, and that's the supremum. So the supremum is basically root 11. So the question is, is the supremum of f of s, is it in, is the supremum of s, is it in s, is it? Notice here that we have an open interval as an endpoint. The supremum is root 11, but root 11 is not part of s. So is supremum of s in the set s? The answer is no. Okay, if we had a line here, close that, then the supreme number is 11 will be, a, will be part of, part of S, will be included in S, okay? So that goes your upper bound, the supreme number, which is a list of the upper bounds, and then you, your, and then the supreme number is not in, in S, okay? All right, so let's do the lower bound. Uh, lower bound is basically like the opposite of, of this result that we have here. It's kind of interesting, you see in a minute. So, Let's start with the lower bound first. What is the lower bound? The lower bound of S. Um, let's go over what the definition is. It's similar to uh, the definition we wrote uh, up here initially. Okay. So um, let me write it under here so you can see the difference. Let's call it A. All right. A is a lower bound one of, it's not unique, is the lower bound of S if for all X's in S there exists this A such that X is greater or equal to um, A for all, um, I already said for all X's in S. Okay, X is greater than or equal to A. All right, so you see the opposite here? 
This one, the, the upper bound is that guarantees that x is smaller than or equal to that boundary for the lower bound. And then for upper bound, I mean for lower bound, you guarantee that x is bigger than or equal to that value. That value is like the bottom value, that's the lower bound, okay? So this is one of the lower bounds. Any number that's less than this also qualifies as a lower bound, okay? What the am I talking about? Let's take a look at this line right here. Uh, this is A. Now we're going down. This is one of the lower bounds. Any number to the uh, left of this, like if this is A1 and this is A2, all these are lower bounds to this set S because this is the left. The greatest of all this is also known as the infimum, just as the list of all these upper bounds is known as the um, supremum. Okay? So for this one, I can just include here the greatest, uh, the greatest. Uh, uh, lower bound, greatest lower bound is the infimum. Okay, the least upper bound you can write that loop. The least upper bound of S is the um, is the um, infimum. I mean the supremum. Okay. The one we just found out. Okay, so you gotta see how it becomes opposite. So least upper bound is supremum. The greatest lower bound is infimum. All right, so that's right down there. So this is what the definition of lower bound is. Any every element of the set has to be bigger or equal to whatever that value is. If you can find a value that is one of the lower bound, then everything less than it is also a lower bound. Okay, so the lower bound is going to be a collection of elements. The lower bound of S. You know, this is one of them, right? Anything from here to the left, all these values to the left right here, da, 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 these are all lower bound because every element in S is bigger than they are. So lower bound is basically Y, now let's call it Z, Z such that Z is greater than or equal to negative root 11. Okay? Any value that satisfies this inequality, okay, that is greater than. Um, less than or equal to negative 11. Okay, so anything that satisfies this inequality going to the left is considered a lower bound. Okay, so out of all these values to the left of here, which is the greatest? The greatest of all of them is known as the infimum. So the infimum, the infimum, in the mum of S. It is the greatest of all these, and we know this inequality is bounded above by negative root 11, so the infimum is basically negative root 11, okay? The question is, 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 um, the in, the infimum of x, for sure, you can write it like this. Is it an s, is it? Well, if you take a look at the inequality that we have right here, this is an open circle. This open circle happens to be the infimum, okay? Is it in included in this set? The answer is absolutely no. Okay, is infimum in there? No. The reason being that this is an open circle. If it were closed, then the infimum will be, will be part of S. Okay? So there goes the answer to all the questions. Oh, okay. You have the um, you have the upper bound, the supremum, and the inclusion or not, or non-inclusion, and then you have the lower bound, the infimum, and then S. And then it's infimum in S. So just know that for this solution that we're looking at right now, um, we're looking at subset of real numbers. So thanks so much for uh, paying attention to this presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and share with your friends. You can also request videos and uh, all the clips can be found on my Thanks again and have a wonderful day.